Welcome back to Legit Street Cars. My name is Alex, and in my last Toyota Camry video, I still can't believe I'm saying I'm doing videos on Toyota Camrys, but in the last one, I kind of hurt this indestructible 5S FE Toyota four-cylinder engine, and a lot of you guys were hurt about it, and I'm not gonna lie, it hurt me too. I don't wanna see an engine get destroyed, but I was doing kind of a weird experiment, and if you guys wanna see how that all went down, eventually police were there, bad things happened, there was smoke and, and, and just a lot of shenanigans. You gotta watch that video. They literally say on their site, and I quote, treatment grows new surface material in all those friction surfaces. Still sounds really good though. When it runs, rip this off and just slam the hood and let's go. All right, so I'm getting a push. Cop is real cool. <laughs> Told him we got a little experiment going on here. It doesn't like that spot. <laughs> In this video, because of the suggestions I got in the comment section, I'm gonna try and revive this engine. We're gonna try and breathe new life into this four-cylinder, 75-ish horsepower Toyota engine by replacing its bearings. So I have connecting rod bearings and uh, main bearings. I don't know which box is which. We're gonna find out. We have a super cheap oil filter, a bunch of cheap oil, and an oil pan gasket. And some of you guys had mentioned that this may work. Like this engine could just come back to life and be totally fine. All right, oil pan is almost out. This thing takes like just a few minutes to remove. All right. <sighs> this is bad, guys. Yeah, this is pretty bad. We caused some damage. Ooh, what's this? Yeah, it's kind of a souvenir at this point. Okay, so with the oil pan removed, we can see what is going on here. We have the oil pickup and the oil pump is over here. I originally thought this might have been the oil pump, but these are actually balance shafts. I don't believe it needs to be timed to the engine. You can see a gear right there. So we're just gonna drop this out so we can get to all of the connecting rod caps. You can see one right there. Just pick up tube out of the way. Oh, 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 it's coming. So here you go, dual balance shaft. So there's a gear in the crank that turns this, turns both of these shafts, and this is basically just to make the engine run smooth. Some four cylinders are a little shaky without a balance shaft. Well, if this engine was rebuilt, it was by a guy named Bob. Some guy named Bob wrote his name on a connecting rod. Huh, Bob, I hope you did a good job here, buddy. But man, this looks dry. <laughs> a little heat got in here, guys. I'm not gonna lie, this is bad. This is really bad. So here is the gear for the balance shaft. And we're gonna attack these connecting rod bearing caps first. Usually when you spin a bearing, it's that before the main. So let's cross our fingers here that that's what it is. Here we go, here we go. All right, so here is the bearing. See what we got. Okay. Yep, you can definitely tell it's worn, but it's not jagged or anything. Not bad for our first one. Ooh, dude, this smells like a freaking campfire. There we go. That is brutal, look at that. Little chunks missing. It's pretty bad, it's pretty bad, but hey, there's still some bearing there. Looking on the bright side here, people. All right, so here's the journal on the crank, and you know, it looks like it's had some heat in it, obviously, but it's perfectly smooth. I couldn't imagine there being any issue, really, with us getting a fresh set of bearings, at least on this journal, and it being, you know, basically fine. Not saying it's gonna last forever, but uh, yeah, it looks pretty good so far. Ooh. Please be okay, Maine, please be okay. Can I take the bearing with it? No. Okay, so bearing's still in here. And it's moving. It's moving. There we go, got my little plastic wedge here. We wanna be very gentle with this engine, cause I can't, oh, okay. Okay, lower main cap bearing. First one, ooh, yeah, that is very, very deep. Look at that. Ah, that stinks. But you know what? The bearing is much weaker than the crank. So let's take a look. So you can see the scrape marks here on the crank. You can't feel them though, you can just see them. So that is another really, really good sign. The difficult part though is the upper crank bearing. So normally you'd need to remove the crank to get to those, 
and I really don't want to do that. Oh, this one's bad. Oh, look at that. Oh, no. This is probably what we were hung up on when we were trying to turn it by hand, and it wouldn't turn. Ooh, I'm going to cut myself. This is brutal. Oh, this is by far going to be the worst one. Guaranteed. Look at this thing. It is just smushing out. Guys, I wish you could smell these bearings right now. Just horrid. Wow. Now that is something you put up on your wall. All right, moment of truth here, moment of truth. Let's see. Wow. It doesn't look that bad, and it, and most importantly, it doesn't feel that bad. I mean, I can feel a little, little tiny bit, but overall it's pretty smooth. And it, basically the bearing just sacrificed itself. <laughs> so nice. OJ thinks it's gonna live. That means it's gonna live. I bet you that first one was the worst of it too. Ooh, does that metal come down? Does that one wanna spin around? Oh, this one's spinning. That's yeah, the whole thing spinning. Okay, so this one completely spun. So this is both halves of the bearing. There we go. And it could also be because we're loosening up the crank too that it spun like that. Cause like this isn't that bad compared to the other ones. Oh. Two at once. <laughs> Dude, we can totally slide the new bearings in on the top. Totally. <laughs> I'm saying they're gonna stay though. No, oh, they're staying, they're staying. I'd say this is the worst journal out of them all. Um, you can feel that. We might get some very fine sandpaper and kind of try and smooth that out, but whatever. Bob. Did you see that? What? <laughs> yeah, Bob wrote his name on a connecting rod. Bob. He was very proud. Yeah, this one is by far the hardest. This is, this is brutal. Uh, we're gonna have some problems, I think, with this one. It is like fused itself. Oh, this is gonna be bad. Uh, I think I think something's gonna break. Oh. Oh, jeez. This thing is solid on there, dude. Jeez. That is bad. It's coming. Bad. Now how bad things are happening. Bad, bad things are going down right now. Oh, something. There we go. It broke. Yep. Okay. Break the other one. All right. There we go. Goodbye. All right. What is going to be behind this cap? We can run it as a three cylinder. It may have gotten hot. Who would do such a thing? Oh no, carnage. Uh oh. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Look at the dust coming out of here. <laughs> Is there a bearing on this or is it stuck on the crank? Well, there's some tin foil here, I think. <laughs> Where is the bearing? <laughs> it's good. I think the, uh, the connecting rod cap became the actual bearing. Oh, dude. That is really bad. Oh, okay, so here we go. So that's, oh, so this bearing like slid under this bearing. Yeah. Okay. It was protecting the other bearing. That's what it did. Toyota bearings sacrifice themselves for the other bearings, then ultimately it's one big sacrifice for the crankshaft in preparation for some guy on YouTube with a carpenter's hammer trying to separate them. Okay, so right now I'm still prying on a bearing, I'm not prying on the crank. This feels so wrong. Oh, that one's, that one's basically out, okay. That's what did it. That's what was this holding one, up the engine. This one is welded. Look at this. Oh, no. You see, like, how hot it got at that corner there? Oh, jeez. It's basically welded. Yeah, I mean, those nut, the nuts were basically welded into the stud. <laughs> oh. It's like a can opener. It's cool. <laughs> Bigger screwdriver? Yeah. Okay. Back and forth. There, there we go. go. It used to be, Bru should, hold on, lay it next to a, a normal bearing. Do we have a normal bearing? Or, you can, <laughs> uh, one, of the, one of the ones. A more normal bearing? Wow. Oh, it is. This is the same bearing as this. It smushed it out, look at that. Uh, run oil in your engines. That's, that's my recommendation here, oil. It works. So, here it is, people. It actually, it doesn't feel bad. You know, it's a little rough. It's a little rough, as you can imagine. 
but it's not as bad as you think. There's no big gouges out of this crank journal. If we can get these connecting rod studs out, we're in good shape. We, we can do this. Okay, so the game plan here is an air hammer. I think these studs are just pressed in to the rod, so we might be able to just air hammer them out and then just grab a bolt and a nut and call it a day. Put these on just so we don't mushroom out the stud, then it wouldn't come out. Oh yeah, oh yeah, nice. look at that. Nice. 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 We're gonna you, get this. Did you bend that other one? What? Oh, uh, it might be bent, yes. Like you did that? Well, I mean, when I was taking the nut off, I might have. <laughs> I'm not saying I did it on purpose. <laughs> no, but I mean like a few minutes ago? No, or... no, 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 I didn't do anything of the such. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I didn't. I can't bend, I can't bend I just metal. Can't imagine getting a cap off with the, with the that thing that bent. Wait, what are you talking? Oh, uh, dude, I mean, that, that's, I bent it from taking the nut off. Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't have it's super matters, going human strength, man. Yep. <laughs> this is ridiculous. No. Air hammering within a few Good. millimeters of the crank. Uh, you want to get the easy one first for build up some confidence? Yep. Done. All right. All right, ready? Yep. Ah, uh, it's coming. It's so slow. Let's go, dude. Almost there. Yep. There we go. Cool. So that one's not too bad. Okay, whenever I say that a bearing is not too bad, I mean under these conditions, okay? They shouldn't look anything like this if you're doing a normal engine rebuild or if you're just inspecting your bearing. So this is bad. This is bad. But it's good because I think it'll still run. Okay, so we don't have any emery cloth. That's what you would normally use to kind of polish out a crank. A little bit of scotch bright. We can clean up these journals pretty nicely. I'll show you guys what that looks like. There you go. All right, it's a few days later and I've come prepared with basically a brand new Toyota crankshaft. This is emery cloth and it's gonna save the day because that one journal for the connecting rod bearing it's not looking pretty at all, so we're gonna kind of get around there, do one of these things, clean it up real nice. All right, so I just wanted to show you guys what this looks like before. It's very, very rough, to say the least. So just like the scotch Bright, we're gonna do one of these, but this is gonna work much, much better, and I might hit up the other ones as well. Then ironically, the hardest part to get to is the part that we can see the best, the bottom. But we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it real good. It's really tough to get to the bottom of the crank and we have like actual material we need to remove from this crank. So, you know, desperate times call for desperate measures. I think the tolerances might be just a little different after this. Oh, but it's getting nice and shiny. Look at that, look at that, looking good, looking good. <laughs> oh, that is so bad. All right, everything is polished out and cleaned up. This is the final result here on the most damaged journal we had. So it's really smooth. You can obviously still see some scratches and scoring, um, but when you feel it, it feels really good. So these are definitely better than that one, but for being the one that was totally locked up and the bearing was just completely pancaked out, this isn't too bad. So here's that connecting rod cap. It's damaged on this side, but whatever. We are gonna slap a bearing on top of it just like so and call it a day. And we'll just put a little bit extra engine assembly lube on this one, just so she starts up nice and easy. You always wanna use the, uh, the backing plate of the brake pad when you're hitting the connecting rod in. So probably the biggest challenge in this entire project is getting the upper half of the main bearings on because we have to kind of slide them around and there really isn't much room. So we're able to just barely get them started. Now it's just gonna be a matter of kind of pushing them through with the oil hole a little bit. This is how we do it. We put one in right there. Then we ever so gently pry on the crankshaft. Guys, don't ever put an engine together like this. This is all really, really bad stuff for entertainment purposes only. Oh no! Like butter, like butter, look at that. Bob would be proud. So once you get a few of these in here, it gets very easy 
and we're able to slide these in by hand just like that but again this is all improper do not do this at home this is the least proper engine repair known to mankind but because it's a toyota i think it's gonna work that's the only reason why we're trying this oh yeah nice All right, and now for the only part of this job that we're doing properly, we're gonna torque. We're gonna torque these bolts. So it's really not that much. It's uh, 20 Newton meters and then 40 for the mains. And then the connecting rods are 25 and then 90 degrees. So nothing too crazy for this wee little baby Toyota engine. There we go. Okay. All right, everything is torqued to Toyota specification. Oh, still got some movement. Still moving. Feels good. I think good's a subjective here. <laughs> yeah, I like it. We do this all day. Hopefully the engine can. Hopefully the starter can. So this is what the oil pan looked like before, and this is what it looks like now all cleaned up. So this is the last piece of the puzzle right here before we get it started. This is mostly engine oil and one quart of trans fluid just to clean things up a bit. Although it really does look mostly like trans fluid, but it's not, I swear. There you go, buddy. You didn't think we were gonna get here, did you? You thought you had your last oil change in my garage. You were wrong. Look at that. All right. You should do it. All right, guys, comment down below. Is it going to start? Is it not going to start? Or is it going to start and then knock? Place your guesses down below. I think it's going to start up and run fine, personally. Looks like you were the last one to work on this thing for an oil change. So what do you think? I think she's got a <laughs> shot. I actually, I actually think it's got a fair chance to start back up. OJ, what do you think? It was a little tight. I mean, moving that thing around. So. We might get it running, but time will tell after that point. I think it might need to do its own bearing clearancing. Fire in the hole? Yep. Oh, oh man. Uh, okay. Dead. That's dead. Ready? Yep. Whoa! It sounds good! It does sound... It's getting better. It's getting better. Oh, that thing's got an oil pressure gauge? It's got an oil pressure light. It's got an oil pressure light. Is it on? It was, and then it went off. Which okay. Is a good, sign. good. A little blip. A little blip. Just a baby. Okay. All right. All right. It runs. It runs. We've resurrected it. It's getting better. It's getting better. Alex, I'll be honest, I was kind of hoping this wouldn't work. I'm going to get a whole bunch of people in here asking for the $100 bearing <laughs> 20, repair 20, special. 20% off bearing special. All right, we're going to go for a quick ride in the Camry. And you... Okay, yes, we're still going to go for a quick ride in the Camry. Uh, before, this thing would get quieter as it warmed up. Okay, thought it was going to die. You can't even tell. Come on, guys. Who wants it? 15 bucks. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Look what it says. <laughs> well, I got it for 800 bucks. That did pretty good. Look at that. $1,300. All right, so that's. And it could be yours for 1500 There we go. It's, it's back up for sale, people. All right, we're about to go for our maiden voyage here. And I have a new decoration for the rear view mirror. I got a gold chain for two bucks just for this. I really wanted to this, drive it home today. This is not the car that you wanted to break down today. It's like zero degrees out, but I was going to drive it home. Um, but the radiator's not here yet. We filled it up, so it's not overheating yet. Right now, you can't even tell it has, you know, a little bit of a rod knock. That, that we locked the engine up. Yeah. That was 4,000 RPM. That was a little sketch. Hey, look, it's CarMax. <laughs> we should go get an estimate. All right, guys, a little hole shot for you, and then we're going back. It didn't blow. 
blow up. It didn't blow up. Wow, this thing really does have like about 75 horsepower. But it feels just the same as it did before I, uh, you know, ran it out of oil. Oh, temperature's starting to get up. We gotta go, we gotta go. A little smoke, no big deal. It's a good thing this engine runs good. There might still be a hole in the radiator. Yeah. <laughs> it runs good. Ooh, that's all the way down. Okay. I mean, it's got oil now, like nothing can stop it. <laughs> well, I mean, 60 miles without any. Do they have an additive that you add to your coolant that you don't have to add any coolant to it? Maybe. I gotta look into that. Okay, so this is no big deal. It's no big deal. We have a hole in the radiator if you guys saw the last video. You know that, we just filled it with water. Okay. Okay, see, there you go. That's a radiator leak detector smoke that we installed, and it works. But this is what the engine sounds like after getting warm. It hasn't overheated or anything, don't worry. It sounds pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. I'm really, really happy with how this all turned out. It's gonna be okay. Well, if you guys need a good used car, dealer maintained recent engine rebuild, I'll leave a link down below, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna keep this car, I'm gonna keep going with it, so we're gonna put a radiator in it, I'm gonna drive it, see how many more miles we can get out of it until that rod knock gets really bad, maybe we'll play around with some more additives to see if it'll fix itself, I, I don't know. Uh, but if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up, share the video, subscribe if you're new, and most importantly, have an awesome day. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Legit Streetcars. I'm going to be posting a bunch of little updates on here because I'm probably not going to do another big video. So anyway, have a good day, guys. I'll catch all of you in the next video.